the brand new Cobalt 24 volt mid torque is breaking boundaries. Today we have the Cobalt 24 volt brushless next generation mid torque impact wrench. This has a half inch anvil up to 650 foot pounds of breakaway torque. We'll be sure to test that out. And you can get this as a kit like you see here with the four amp hour battery and the 150 watt rapid charger. And that kit model is KIW4024A-03. Now the tool alone is the KIW124B-03. Let's dive right in, take a closer look at each one of these features, and then we'll take it over to the test bench, see how well it does. Then as always, we'll come back and talk about pricing, warranty, and what we thought of it. Now we already covered kind of all the new next generation tools. There are six of them. And if you've missed that, then check out the video that we have floating somewhere around here. We'll be sure to have a link in the description as well. Little spoiler alert, this thing is putting out the power and you'll see what we're talking about in just a moment. This is the brand new Cobalt Next Generation 24 volt brushless mid torque impact wrench. And this is the model number KIW124B-03. If you get it kitted like you see here with the 4.0 amp hour extended runtime battery, uh, the rapid 150 watt charger, and the bag, the kit number I believe is KIW4024A-03. Now we covered all these features in our introduction of the next generation tools, but if you missed that video, be sure to check it out. We'll have a link uh, flying around here somewhere, uh, but also uh, we'll go over them very quickly. And if you want any more in-depth stuff, you can check that one out. Uh, basically this is 650 foot pounds of loosening or breakaway torque and 500 foot pounds of tightening torque. We get a hog ring style half inch anvil on the front. So that friction ring or hog ring is going to retain that socket without any pin detent or, uh, or pin and O ring or anything like that. Now we get multiple modes on this as well. So when I turn this on, number one, we see our LED here at the bottom, uh, but we also get three different power modes or three different speed modes there. So one, two, and three, and that's going to give us up to 2200 RPM or 2800 IPM or impacts per minute. Now we can obviously throttle that with our variable speed trigger as well. So you can see I can go pretty slow with this trigger, even though it's kind of a, it's kind of touchy, kind of jumps right off. Uh, but then I can ease the power into it as much as I want here, depending on which actually I had it in one of the wrong modes. That's why I was doing that. So in one, two or three, I can easily make this crawl as, as slow as I want to all the way up to that max of 2200 RPM. And obviously the impacts per minute are also going to follow suit about, you know, depending on how much trigger pull you've got in there. So we can set our speed or power settings there with that one, two or three, the one, two or three with that left hand button. But the auto mode button over here on the right is independent of those speeds. So in other words, at any of those speeds, you can also select uh, an auto mode here. So you can see when I click that, it says auto slow. And that's the only one it's lighting up. It's not lighting up the other one. Now, the reason is, is because I have it in Lucid. If I slide it over to Titan, now you'll see the hand tight mode turns on. So basically one's only going to work in Titan and one's only going to work in Lucid. And the reason is that the hand tight mode is going to be like for lug nuts. You're running lug nuts on and it'll run it until it's hand tight and stop the tool. And same thing when you're backing off those lug nuts in the, uh, in the auto mode, it's going to slow down once it senses that those lug nuts are broken free. And that goes for, you know, any type of faster you're doing, you're running down head bolts and it, you know, reaches, you know, a few foot pounds, it's going to stop the tool so you don't over torque. And then you can come back with a torque wrench and, uh, and do your final tightening of those critical fasteners. Quick measurement of the tool. Uh, you're looking at right over 10 and a half inch, about 10 and three quarter inches tall with the four amp hour battery and length on it is just right at seven inches as well from tip to tail, a little less than seven inches. And we'll weigh it with that four amp hour battery. Just under six pounds. So five pounds, 15 and a half ounces with the four amp hour battery. 
and a little over four pounds, so four pounds, four ounces with no battery at all. Don't know why you would want that weight because you're always going to be running that battery. And I think that's a comparable battery, the, uh, the four amp hour. So again, right at six pounds. I've either seen it dead on six pounds or just shy uh, a bit as you see it here. All right, so here we are on our test bench. We've got the Cobalt 24 volt mid torque impact or model number KIW124B-03. We're going to take our torque setting tool and we're going to start at 100 foot pounds and jump up 50. So we're going to go 100, 150, 200, 250, and uh, then we'll come back and do 3, 354, and 450. And once we get through this, we'll go to these larger fasters here. We'll probably get through that rather quickly. I don't think we're going to even slow down uh, on the first set. You know what? In fact, let's just jump ahead. Let's do 100, 200, 300, and 400. Jump those 50s out of the way initially, and we'll jump right up to that 400 foot-pound range. This is supposed to be able to do 650, so we should be able to tighten these to 650 foot-pounds and it be able to break those free. So let's get started. In fact, we're going to start at 150. Okay, we've got the Cobalt Impact. Uh, we've got it in speed mode three here. Uh, so that's the highest mode. Let's make sure we're in reverse. Yes, we're in reverse. You see we have some different colored index marks on here. We're gonna let this hit or impact for 10 seconds. And if it's starting to break the faster free uh, at the 10 second mark, we'll let it keep going. If it has not started moving or stopped moving, then we will actually stop the tool and won't give it that actual setting. So. Here we go, starting at 150 foot-pounds. Okay, I did not think that would be an issue. So we just eclipsed 450 foot-pounds with no problem whatsoever. Let's jump right up to the big boys. We'll start at 500 foot-pounds and go up from there. So while we're setting up for the 500 foot pounds, let's just go over these different modes here. So I'm going, I'm going to go to hand tight mode and run these fasters back down so that we're ready the next time. And you'll see, I'll keep my finger on the trigger and the tool stop. My finger is still on the trigger. Here we go again. So you see my finger still on the trigger. Stopped again, stopped again. I will tell you that concerns me because that's hitting longer than most of the tools that I've used, most impact wrenches that have that feature. And I think that's probably tightening to probably 40, 50 foot pounds before it's stopping. I really don't know what that is, but we may test that later, but I'm not crazy about that. I don't think it stops soon enough for you to be able to trust that on a critical fastener. Lug nuts, yes, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine with lug nuts for it to stop it at that procedure. Um, I would rather it see it stop sooner. Now let's go ahead and let's test the auto slowdown mode. So you see it kind of, so basically once it breaks free, it actually slows down. Okay, so we have now jumped to 500 foot-pounds. We have 500, 600, and 700. Now let's get out of auto mode. We're in speed mode three again. And by the way, we do have a full battery. So 500 foot-pounds. Six hundred. So be sure to watch these indexing marks. Okay, no problem with that. 700 foot pounds. Let's 
So it may have taken a little longer than 10 seconds, but it was already starting to roll then. It was already starting to spin. So I think we're getting there to that peak, but it definitely did 700 foot pounds without an issue. All right, now we have to bring the big one out. So this is the uh, High Torque Lithium Series 2, and this will take us up to thousands of foot pounds. I don't think we'll need this today, uh, but we're going to start uh, again at 800 foot pounds. As you see that we have dialed into our, to our screen there, if you can see that. Okay, now we're ready for the big boys here. We've got 800 foot-pounds, 900 foot-pounds, and 1,000 foot-pounds, these fasters torque to. We still, we're in speed mode three. We still have a full battery. We are in reverse. And off we go, 800 foot-pounds. Okay, we're defying the odds of a mid-torque impact wrench, uh, so up we go. Okay, we're going to have a couple of things happening here. Number one, we're going up to larger fasteners uh, with a coarser thread, which I don't like that. Uh, we do have some more finer fasteners or finer threads to replace these with that we will do so soon. Uh, my point is the finer thread is going to give us a truer measurement just from the ramping on and off. Anyway, don't want to get into all that science. But the main thing is we're having to switch to an adapter because you cannot get a two and a quarter inch socket in a half inch drive. So I have to use an adapter that goes from half inch to three quarters. We are going to lose strength there. But we're still getting out of the range of where a mid-torque impact wrench should be used anyway. So now we're just trying to find out numbers just for our own, you know, sake of uh, knowing, I guess. Uh, but we'll do it. So, just want you to know that, that number one, we're losing a little torque by the adapter. Not really a little, probably at least 10%. And uh, so that's going to be swallowed there as, as well as going to larger fasters, but then we're going to a coarser ramp. Um, it is what it is. We've torqued these to 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, and 1,400 foot-pounds. We are still in mode three. We still have a full battery, and we are in reverse. I don't have an indexing mark on here. Let's see if I can give us something to see here. It's going to be hard to see black on black, but there's something on there. Anyway, so 1,100 foot-pounds. So we got nowhere, that indexing mark, I'm staring straight at it right here uh, for at least 10 seconds. We didn't get anywhere. So that's our peak. Again, we jumped up to larger fasteners. Um, just the fact that we were, you know, at a thousand foot pounds with this one. In fact, I'm going to go back because I know we're going to have some naysayers saying no way, which I get it. Let's try it again. I'm going to go back here and start at 900 foot pounds. All right, here's what we have. We've gone back and tightened this to 900 foot-pounds, this to 1,000, and I believe we've stripped this faster here. So now we've got 900 and 1,000, and we'll have to replace that later. Still up, oh, looks like we've dropped a cell. Let's see what we do. Still in mode three. So we've dropped a cell on the battery. Now we can't break free 900 foot-pounds. 
So, we're going to go to the 8.0 battery, see if we can pick that back up. Yep, so we picked it back up, and now we'll go to a thousand. Yep, we got that too. So we've maxed out our fasteners here. Let's go back to do 1100 here with the 8.0 battery and see if we can get that. Okay, now we're at 1100 foot pounds. Nope, I thought I saw it move at about the five, at, you know, five, six, seven second mark, but it didn't. Just kind of jumping around there. My indexing mark stayed right there. Uh, so it looks like that we may have picked up a, a little with, with getting the 8 amp hour on there to be able to break that 900 and 1,000 back free again. But we're reaching that limit that the larger battery is not really helping us anymore. So still pretty stout numbers uh, with this mid-torque impact. Okay, we've torqued this back to a thousand foot pounds. I'm gonna put a fresh 4.0 battery on there since we had dropped a cell. So now we're back at a fully charged battery. And I'm in mode three. Here we go. So 1,000 foot pounds. You see, the four amp hour still breaks free that thousand foot pounds. You just need a fresh pack. So you want to see it on some old rusty lug nuts. This is a 1995, I don't know, I think it's a two, two and a half ton truck. Uh, these lug nuts looks like it's been since 95 since they've been off. So anyway, we're going to see if we can break these free, at least a few of them. No issue at all. I'm sure the comments are going to be buzzing, talking about our testing methods and all those things, but regardless, over and over, we could torque those fasteners to 1,000 foot-pounds and we could break it free. And over and over, we could torque it to 1,100 foot-pounds and could not break it free. Now, yes, we're stepping up to larger fasteners, and as I talked about the ramp of the threads and everything else, so I know there's a gap there. There's a lot of difference in just torquing something, uh, you have to take into consideration the pitch of the threads and lubrication and adapters and all those sorts of things. But it is what it is. We test with what we have. We showed you that over and over, we can break free a thousand foot pounds. Breaking free lug nuts is no problem at all. Now, will it come upon a lug nut it can't do? Absolutely. That's always going to be the case unless you've just got the beast of all beasts. But regardless, we show you what we have. We show you what we do and we're open and honest about it. So let us know your thoughts on this. Uh, pricing wise, you can buy this kit for 229 bucks. Now that's pretty cheap for an impact wrench and battery and charger that does what this does. I don't know if that price will stay there, but I know that's what it is right now. It says 229. Now, a little kind of concern of mine is in the header of the actual page on Lowe's. We'll have a link in the description. It says tool only in parentheses, but then it mentions about the battery and the charger. The pictures say battery and charger. The, the model number, the KIW 4024A-03 is the kit number. So I think that may have just been a mistake there. I'm hoping that they're not going to do some type of price swap and all of a sudden that price go up $400 for this kit. Bottom line is for $229, jump on it while you can. Uh, this thing is, is kind of heavy for a mid-torque. It's kind of a little bit bulky for a mid-torque, but it's still much smaller than a high-torque. And obviously, it's putting out the numbers of a high-torque. We're getting crazy uh, when we're looking at half-inch anvils and what we're applying, what kind of torque and what kind of power we're applying to these smaller sockets and adapters and anvils and all sorts of things. So anyway, check it out for yourself. Also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. 
And by the way, could you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.